Hi there and welcome back to the channel. My name is Joe and today I'm going to be doing a walkthrough of a typical mathematical based economics question that you could find in an interview setting if you're applying to a university like Oxford or Cambridge. You can expect economics interviews to have at least one or two questions relating to mathematics and how you can apply it in economics. So let's go over our question. Suppose I roll a fair six-sided die. Depending on the number that comes up, I win or lose money according to the following rules. If the die lands on a two or lower, I lose 120 pounds. If it lands on an odd number, I win 60 pounds. And if it lands on a six, I win 240 pounds. Jackpot. And our questions are, one, what is the expected value of rolling this die? Two, should I take this bet? And three, what might encourage somebody to take this bet? Okay, so let's take this apart a little bit. Um, in an interview setting, you wouldn't be expected to necessarily rattle off an answer straight off the bat. Um, there might be a term or two that you're unfamiliar with and it'd be completely fine to clarify with the lecturer what exactly they might mean by those terms and ask for definitions. It would be completely fine if you've never heard of the term expected value before and to question what that means. To that, we'll go through a brief explainer now. So expected value is a term that we apply when we've got um, a lottery of sorts and a lottery in this case uh, just means a series of different uh, outcomes um, with their own associated probabilities. So in economics, a lottery could be flipping a coin and taking a bet on the outcome. It could be rolling a die, like in this example, as well as the more traditional idea of a lottery where you buy a ticket or a scratch card and you have a chance of winning some money and a bigger chance of not winning anything at all. But there we go. So expected value in this sense is quite close to the idea of the average outcome of our lottery, saying what the average result is. And hopefully you know the formula to calculate the mean of something. So you'd have the amount of numbers, wait, <laughs> you'd have the sum of all of the numbers divided by how many there are. Um, and expected value is quite similar to the mean um, in terms of calculating it. But what you do is that instead of adding up all of your numbers, you have each number or outcome or another word for it would be payoff um, in this case. And you multiply it by the probability of that outcome happening. So take an example, if we flip a coin, uh, we might have an outcome based on whether you get a heads or tails. So those are the outcomes. Say heads, you get 10 pounds, tails, you lose five pounds. Those are the outcomes or payoffs. Uh, and the associated probability is the probability of the heads or tails happening. And when you flip a coin, assuming it's fair and all of that, then that's 50% either way, so it's half-half. The expected value, you can work it out by timesing the probabilities by the payoffs or those outcomes. So that would be a half times 10 plus a half times minus five. Uh, together that would give you, well, half times 10 is five, Half times minus five is minus 2.5, so A plus the five and the minus 2.5 together, and that gives you 2.5 pounds overall. This gives us an idea of the average value that we could expect from taking this bet. So hopefully that's cleared up a little bit, and again, if you didn't know that, that's completely fine, but hopefully the maths makes sense now. So let's go back into our question. So once again, in an interview setting, uh, doing your working uh, for a question like this, uh, you'd almost definitely be given a pen and a piece of paper to work on. And a really good tip would be to speak aloud as you're working it out. With our new definition of expected value being all of the probabilities times by the payoffs added together, uh, we're gonna work that out. Uh, so first, let's, let's look at the different outcomes um, of that die roll. So that would be the numbers one, two, three, four, five, and six. And we're just gonna label this outcome. And let's look at all the probabilities for that. And it's quite simple here because it's a, it's a die. They're all got a one in six chance of happening. So probability, one over six for all of them. Cool. And now, we've got to work out what the actual value or payoff um, each of those outcomes gives us. So what happens if we roll a one, two, three, four, five, or six? Uh, so let's take a look back at our question. So if it lands on a two or lower, we lose 120 pounds. Bummer. Right, so let's call, uh, just let's just use X as a stand-in for our payoff here. Uh, so if it lands on a two or lower, minus 120 pounds.
Cool. And now, if it lands on an odd number, we win 60 pounds. Cool, so one is an odd number. Three and five. Let's make sure this lines up. Cool. And finally, if it lands on a six, I win 240 pounds. So let's get that in there. And that leaves four with nothing. We can just put a zero there. So expected value, again, summing up all of the probabilities times by the payoffs. Uh, so let's do another column here with the probability times by the payoff for each outcome. So one six times by minus 60, that's minus 10. One six times by minus 120 equals minus 20. One over six times by 60 is 10. One over six times zero is zero. Six times uh, 60 is 10. And six times 240 is 40 pounds. So let's sum up this new column, the probabilities times by the payoffs. So minus 10, uh, minus 30, uh, plus 10, which is back to minus 20, uh, minus 20 still, minus 10, and then plus 30. Cool, so this is our answer. 30. So and here we have the answer to our first question. It would be 30 pounds. And again, we could provide a bit of interpretation to that. So something along the lines of, in the long run, this would be the average payoff from this lottery or this bet. And it's pretty common in interviews like this and in university in general, uh, that you'll have a series of follow-on questions to this initial starter question. So here's maybe where things can open up into a bit more of a discussion and it's not so much just about cold hard facts and just adding things up and doing you know the, the multiplication that we've done so far. So should I take this bet? Yes, no. Um, you want to make sure that you give a specific answer to this but you can reason both sides. Um, so you know in this case we've got two options you should or you shouldn't. Let's evaluate why you should first. So a good answer could be something like uh, well Yes, if, uh, if you know that um, in the long run, uh, the expected value is gonna be positive, so if it's something like plus 30 pounds, then you know, as economists, even though we lose a bit on some of the uh, possibilities here, we can potentially gain quite a lot um, with some of these other outcomes. So if we roll a six, for instance, that gave us 240 pounds. And on average, we'd come out ahead. Um, we might not if it was just one roll, but on average, it's going to be a positive outcome for us. But now let's uh, consider the other side of why you maybe shouldn't take this bet. So this is where we can talk about risk. Uh, and in economics, uh, expected value doesn't take into account risk at all. On average, we're gonna be 30 pounds up, but that doesn't necessarily mean too much. Uh, just by knowing that, you don't necessarily know how the lottery or this, this bet is kind of distributed. You might be gaining that average 30 pounds um, very reliably with just every, you know, say if the die, if rolling the dice, every number gave you 30 pounds, then that'd be super low risk. Um, but in this case, we've got a few different outcomes, uh, some positive, some negative, and that's gonna add an element of risk. Uh, so for instance, if you were a student, this might hit a bit too close to home uh, in a year or two, once you're applied and, and in university, but, if you are 500 pounds into your overdraft and somebody offered you this bet and there's a chance of losing money on it, um, then it might not be a bet that you're willing to take at that point. You uh, don't have too much wealth to your name, uh, so the impact of a loss if you do lose this bet, and there is a sizable chance of that happening, the impact of that loss might be too big for you to stomach. So in that case, it would be completely fine to say with those risk preferences, uh, no, you shouldn't take those bets. Um, the, the chance of losing money would impact you sufficiently so that it couldn't be compensated by the average payout being positive. If you didn't reach exactly my answer, then that's completely fine. But as long as you reason it yourself using sound logic and explain yourself to the, the, the tutor and are open to feedback and criticisms and can, you know, defend yourself but also take on board new advice, uh, then you'd be absolutely fine. Um, if you have a different answer to this question, feel free to comment what you think it might be uh, down below and I can help you evaluate whether, whether or not that would be a good idea or not. Cool, so let's go on to our final question. So what might encourage somebody to take this bet? Now this is an extension again of the previous question, should I take this bet? And uh, yeah, we can have a think about what would encourage somebody to take this bet. And the issue here is, is that it's something of a risky bet, right? We, we've got some chances to lose money even though we can gain money in the other uh, possibilities. 
So what might encourage somebody to take this bet? Well, there's a few things, and I'm probably not gonna be able to get through all of them here. Uh, but one, uh, you might be wealthier. So that, if, uh, if you're particularly wealthy, um, then the impact of that loss or those losing scenarios won't be as impactful for you. Um, so on average, what we tend to see is that uh, wealthier people have a higher risk tolerance um, because no individual bet is going to ruin them compared to a regular mortal person with 500 pound overdraft. So a high level of wealth could be one factor. Um, and then we could think about maybe ways of just uh, de-risking it. Uh, so there's a few things that we've got there. Uh, if you think about maybe ideas of, of how you can de-risk something, uh, if there was say insurance uh, for this bet, um, now that's maybe a bit far-fetched. It might be possible to make an agreement with uh, whoever you're taking this bet with or with another third party or something saying, well, yes, on average, this is going to work out, um, but you might pay them a bit of money in every scenario. So like a premium for insurance um, with the idea that if you roll a die and would usually lose money, then this insurer could uh, help cover that loss. And in a winning scenario, you're still ahead, but maybe lose that premium. Other things you consider uh, are maybe reducing the impact of the bets on you, specifically the negative ones, but you might have to share the, the, the upside as well. Um, so you might get a friend uh, and share this bet with them. Uh, so you maybe just go half and half uh, on the benefits and half and half on the losses. So that would mean that the expected value again would half to 15 pounds, but so the winnings are less, but also the losses would be less as well. And that could put you in a scenario where you'd be more happy to take this bet. Again, to take that to an extreme, if somebody said heads, you win 20p or 20 cents, wherever you're from, tails, you lose 10 cents, then sure, why not? You're probably gonna come out ahead and who really cares if you lose that small amount of money? That's an example of, you know, sharing that risk, risk sharing. Uh, to reduce the risk overall. There's a sort of variation of that um, called risk pooling, where if say uh, that bet was available to many people and you had eight friends, you could tell them all to take the bet and you would just basically collect your winnings or losings um, and share them out evenly. And that'd be another way of effectively taking the bet several times. And if you do that enough, you're gonna get closer to the expected value or the average result of the bet. Um, so if 100 people uh, took this bet, uh, the average result of it would be pretty close to this expected value. Cool, and that's an end to the questions. Um, so, I mean, in terms of applications, like what we've covered here is a bit of a primer or a bit of an introduction into risk and probability theory, which is a common topic in economics courses. Uh, and it can be, it can have great real life applications in terms of, you know, weighing up opportunities or risks um, and how to think a bit more strategically or rationally about those opportunities. So in this case, thinking about, you might hear the term risk tolerance a lot with either investing or with a particular project. Uh, so it's worthwhile thinking about, say, the average payoff of, of a certain project or, or risk or investment. It's helpful to give labels to these. And really, interviews can often serve as a bit of a stepping stone to give you a taste of, of the sort of topics that you might be discussing in an actual uh, seminar or classroom setting uh, and seeing how you respond to it and seeing how you respond to input from the lecturer and so on. And just a note on the maths here involved, um, some of you might be surprised that this isn't necessarily particularly difficult maths. Uh, all we've done here is just times things together and add them all up. Uh, and I would say, yeah, don't worry about that. Like if this was easy for you, then, then great, brilliant. Um, if this wasn't easy for you, then I wouldn't worry about it at all. Uh, there's not too much prior knowledge assumed, but it can often be uh, most valuable to just apply simple maths directly, uh, consistently, and just get it right and just work through your workings, be able to, to respond and adapt those answers if the questions then change or get, get revised. And there we go. Well, I hope that was enjoyable for you. Um, please uh, like this video and subscribe to the channel if you've not already. Um, it would really help and just please comment down what you'd like to see next. I'm hoping to do a few more of these videos. So some uh, pointers and questions and ideas would be great. See you next time.